Welcome to the Red Conrad Show, the story of my life and world events how I see them. If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get this going. Before we get going with this episode, I just want to point out that the next part is going to be um, subscriber only. So if you're not listening to this show on Spotify, please go to Spotify and subscribe so that you can hear the next part of this story. Um, The link to the Spotify show is on the website uh, show.redconrad.com. Again, the next the next part of this story is going to be subscriber only content. So, if you want to hear the next part of this story, please subscribe. So, when it gets uploaded, you can listen to the next part of the story. Thank you. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe for subscriber only content. You can find links to subscribe at show.redconrad.com. Subscriptions are available directly through Spotify, as well as through your, a memberful account, where you, you can access subscriber-only content on any podcast listening platform. Whatever platform you prefer to listen to podcasts on, you will be able to listen to my subscriber-only content on that platform via a, a feed specifically for you through your memberful account. Again, the links to the subscriptions can be found at show.redconrad.com. Hi everyone, this is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening! Hello, everybody. Um, I know I, I was saying I, I wasn't gonna, you know, mention much about my current situation until I got until I got through it. But in all reality, I'm probably not going to be through it for months to come yet. At least not entirely. Uh, so, the basic rundown is this. Um, well, first of all, I'm only going to, you know, I'll say what I did. Uh, but if you want to hear exactly the situation and exactly how serious it is, you're going to have to... Listen to the to the subscriber only episode because I'm not mentioning that in this episode. It's fucking embarrassing. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> Joanne was my was my purpose in life. Okay. Um, everything I did, I did for her. She sold me. No, basically how to be a better me. Okay? If that makes any sense. Like, I mean, yeah, I've been in and out of therapy. I've been on and off medications. Um, until I ultimately switched to an herbal remedy. Um. But I give most of my credit for, uh, how I've grown then, you know, the, my ability to um, control how I react to different things, not to my therapy or the medication, but to Joanne. Um, because, like, before I had her in my life, I really didn't fucking care. Like, I, I had that this attitude, like, I was me, if you didn't like me for who I am, fuck you, go to hell, I don't give a shit. 
and my response to a lot of shit was, you know, varying degrees of anger. Okay, which is probably the BPD. Um, but that's just how I respond, reacted to things. And then Drone walked into my life, and everything changed. Granted, she saw me at my worst and still decided to be with me. Because she saw that before I even, you know, asked her out. Um, and she helped me in a lot of ways. Um, and when I lost her to, to the cancer... Yeah, I was grieving hard. I grieved for a long time. Uh, to a degree, I still am, almost two years later. But I also, like, I went into such a deep depression. Like, it was hard just to work, right? Now, I love my business. I love the work I do. I love my customers. You know, but for a long time after losing her, it was hard. Like, I, I didn't want to do fucking anything. Um, and every every time, you know, things would start looking like they're, they're starting to go the right way, things are going to start getting back on track, something would, would happen to knock me down again. Now, in the, in the middle of, you know, me trying to work and be out in the general public, while literally anything and everything is, is reminding me of Joanne, I'm literally bursting into tears in public, while I'm dealing with all that shit, um, I'm, I'm, I wasn't really advertising that much anymore Look for new customers, I was really focusing mainly on my usual customers. No, it was just... And then I got my van breaking down left and right. Um, I got tires blowing. I mean... Anything that can fucking go wrong... Did. And what I did was... Um... Because... Well, for... There was two weeks straight after she passed away that... I didn't even work. I just stayed home and cried. Um, and getting back to work was a, was a slow go. And like I said, I wasn't even advertising anymore. I was only taking care of my usual customers. I wasn't really chasing down new customers. For a year and a half, that, that was my life. You know, just barely getting by. I just, I wasn't motivated, my, my mind wasn't with it. Then I finally start snapping back to reality. I start pulling out of my depression. And, uh, every time something looked like it was, things were going to start getting back to normal, back on track. Something comes along that blew shit right out the damn water. I sent my fucking stress levels and anxiety levels sky high. Um, caused, you know, a diversion of funds to go to other areas than where I needed it to go. So, what I did was I took out new debt. Personal loans, credit cards. And the idea being, I was gonna do that, use that money to cover what I had to cover. And as those bills were now coming due, I'd be back on getting back back on track, 
I'd be advertising more. I'd have, you know, new waves of customers coming in, in addition to my usual customers. So, the money would be there to take care of all this extra, extra debt now, as I slowly, you know, work my way out of my current situation. Problem is, I wasn't in the right state of mind when I, when I thought about this. I, I was in, in an anxiety-filled panic attack. Um, I was focused strictly on, I got this problem, I need an answer. Well, the personal loans and credit cards was the first fucking thing that popped in my head. As soon as I was able to make it make sense of how it was going to work, I did it. If you have any kind of financial issue, regardless of the reason why, and you're and and like me, you get you know stressed out, the stress triggers your anxiety, which then triggers a fucking panic attack. Do not fucking act on anything to be planned during that panic attack. Calm your ass down first. And then, th- and then think it through properly. If you're thinking about bringing on new debt to take care of old debt, you got to plan out where that extra money is going to come from to take care of that new debt that you're using to pay, to pay your, your existing debt. All right. And by existing debt, I don't mean, I don't just mean loans. I'm talking like your regular bills, your phone bill, utility bills. All that kind of stuff. All right. So it's not like well, you can take out a, you take a loan out to pay off that loan. No, that, that that's not what I'm talking about here at all. Um. And then you guys think about well, if something happens, what am I going to do about it? Where I can still keep everything maintained. Like, you, you really got to think this shit through. Because if you don't, I'm telling you from experience, it's going to go sideways. It's not maybe it'll go sideways or there's a high chance. That, nah, it is 100% going to go fucking sideways if you don't properly think it out. So do not think about shit revolving around finances. During a fucking an anxiety filled panic attack. Just don't do it. Because you're going to do the same thing that I did. You're going to think of the first solution that pops in your mind. And you're going to make it make sense somehow. And then you're going to act on it. Without, without properly thinking it through. And all that's going to do. Is create a problem. That you gotta fix in order to fix the existing problem. And as you try to do that, things just snowball. And now it turns into this massive problem. And in case you can't tell, if you, if you can't hear it in my voice, yes, I am extremely stressed out. I do feel extremely overwhelmed. I do have my bits of the damn day where I can't hide it. Um, I'm normally pretty good hiding it in public, but the other day, um, a couple people actually, when I was at their establishment to pick up deliveries for, for my customers, they saw it in my face and they asked me about it. Um, so, yeah, I am stressed out. I am overwhelmed. One of my friends has been there for me. You know, make sure I'm alright. You know, have somebody to talk to, etc. and so on. And he asked me why this one person in my family I haven't contacted yet because this one person in my family has helped me over the years. 
with different things. And I definitely could use the help right now with this. Well, the short answer as to why I didn't contact this person is because growing up I heard I'm not, I'm not going to be anything but a failure in life. I'm not going to succeed at anything in life. Um, nothing was ever good enough. Even if it was done perfect, it wasn't perfect in, the, in this person's eyes. And though I have been receiving help, it it only comes after um, yelled that and spoken down to. Like I'm um, some kind of fucking imbecile. And I'm not. My brain is a sponge for information. I mean, I've owned um, several traditional businesses. I've been involved in affiliate marketing, network marketing, across all different industries, all different uh, niches. And a lot of that information I still have retained of businesses, of, of niches I haven't worked in you know, almost 20 years now, I still have all that information stored in my head. Like, I don't forget shit. And, like, I, I do know what I'm doing. The knowledge isn't the problem. My drive isn't the problem. Okay? The problem, which this person doesn't want to understand, is my mental state. I suffer from a cocktail of mental conditions that I gotta battle with. I mean, I'm literally battling myself in my own head every fucking damn day. Then it gets fucking exhausting. And because of the one condition in particular, you know, I, I see things a certain way. And if I'm in, if I'm in the middle of an anxiety attack or a panic attack, I'm only going to see things a certain way. The singular solution that my mind comes up with is the solution. I don't fucking plan it out, think it out, you know, the normal, proper thought process, I don't do any of that shit, I just do it, now, uh, sometimes, depending on what it is, it does actually work out the way I, I thought it out to work, but most of the time, it w winds up, you know, with me shooting myself in the foot. And this go around, trying to come out of a year and a half long depressive state after losing Joanne, and realizing, you know, what that year and a half of depression did to, did to me, I didn't allow myself to, you know, go through the, the normal you know, thought process, okay, well, this is the problem, you know, what's some possible solutions to it, the pros and the cons of each solution, well, now, if I do it this way, and then that happens, uh, how am I going to fix that? No, I didn't allow myself to do any of that shit. I didn't let myself calm down first before thinking about anything. I was too focused on the problem, and wanting a solution. And I just... If I did what I did now, I can probably pull it off. But I didn't. I did it back when I thought about it. And it went... Fucking sideways on me. The plan was that I was going to take out these loans, 
pay what it has to get paid. And as the loans are coming in, and as I'm paying what needs to get paid, I was going to start advertising as heavy as I used to. I was going to start, you know, bringing on more new customers and trying to get the new customers to, be, to become new usual customers. You know, and really focus on getting back on track. So, as the new loan payments come due, I'd have new money coming in to pay it off. And that's what was supposed to happen. But, one, I wasn't all the way out of my depression yet. And two, every fucking time shit looked like it was getting back on track and I was starting to feel good and this is going to work. Something would go wrong that would end up costing, you know, hundreds of dollars to, to fix. Quite a number of surprise repairs on the van. Between, um, in the middle of all this, I had my radiator blow. I had um, two tires blow at the same time. Three hundred and fifty fucking damn dollars for for two new tires. I don't remember how much my radiator was, but that wasn't cheap. Um, my tie rods. Um, I'm at the point now where I gotta get brakes. So, there's just constantly shit. Well, brakes, is, I guess, would be routine maintenance. <laughs> but, the tie rods, the radiator blowing, I mean, it couldn't happen at a worse possible fucking time. So, needless, needless to say, because of my lack of planning all this, and, and um, doing it in the completely wrong state of mind it went sideways it only added to, to the issue that was pre-existing because of the prior year and a half and Those two issues combined created even more serious, much bigger problem that, you know, I am highly stressed about. And right now, I just can't have certain things in my enter my mind and you know trigger my depression and or my anxiety to a point where you know my mind shuts down again I can't afford another day let alone another week month year of being in that dark depression I'm, I've literally just started to come out of not that long ago so, no, I didn't contact the person. My friend asked me why I didn't contact them yet. Because whenever I do, I'm spoken to like I'm a fucking idiot. Now, granted, I didn't think things through properly, but at the same time, this person needs to understand how my mind works. And why I did shit, the way I did shit, when I did shit. My whole life, that's how it's been, if this person actually ever paid attention to me. The only difference is, most of my problems, I was always able to figure out, once I noticed the larger problem, because of the the plan I had went sideways 
I was always able to figure out calmly a solution to that to that problem that ultimately solved all my problems. But I don't think I've ever had a problem quite as big or as serious as the one I'm currently facing. So I'm a little stressed out and overwhelmed because it's 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 fucking scary. And then there's talk not understanding me or not and not understanding the situation, which by the way, over the, the a year and a half that I was talking to this person about my situation. And I, they have been helping me through it. I've told them about it. And I told them what's going on. I told them what I'm trying to do. You know, more or less how it happened. And they don't want to hear it. All they see is, well, I got my business. I don't got the money that I need to take care of the situation that I'm in. Close the business, get a regular job. The problem is, the best paying regular job pays half to what I make with my business. And the business isn't the problem. And the problem is, for a year and a half that I'm in this really dark depression, my business and my plans went off track. I wasn't advertising, looking for new customers. I was really only taking care of my usuals. I did finally recently start getting back into advertising again. And when things started to go sideways, it also happened to be, you know, slow season for uh, my industry. So, you know, that's not my business's fault. It's just, it's just the industry. That part of the year is just slow. It just is. And I need purpose. And being able to focus on my business gives me that purpose. Since, you know... I don't have Duran anymore. Cancer took away from me. And she was my purpose. Well. Until and unless I find somebody else to be in my life with me. And I can use them as my purpose. You know where I'm doing what I do for them. I need my business. And the reason why I say that. The way I say it. Is because like. I don't really like doing shit for me, if that makes any sense. Like, what's the point? I don't really get any um, sense of fulfillment, I guess, out of doing shit for myself. Like everything, I need to be, I need to be doing something for somebody else. Right, I need, I need to be, you know, doing something that's helping other people. So, my business right now is my purpose. Getting it back on track, um, getting my advertising going again, start, you know, seeking out newer customers, as well as maintaining my usuals. And, I know I can do it. And there's actually people across the country that know I can do it because my business was featured in two different news outlets um, for my industry. And I got, I was, had people reaching out to me that saw me in, in, those, in those outlets, you know, praising my efforts, praising my, my, the way I'm set up. And I just recently had a conversation on Reddit about my business with people 
several of them, you know, said that they, that they want to move here just to work for me because not only do, do I pay better than the gig services, they like how my business is set up and they like the flexibility of it. I mean, yeah, the fact that, that the base pay is higher than what the gig services pay and a lot of people, you know, their number one concern is, how, well, how much am I getting paid? So, whereas the pay would naturally be a part of it, the, a lot of these people were, were focused more on my business's uh, vision, my business's mission. They, they like the fact of how I have it set up. And one guy said that he was already planning on moving, moving here, a couple hours south of me, but he says that he has no problem you know, moving closer to work for me. So, I know I, I, I know what I'm doing. And I know from other workers in my industry that my business can successfully grow given the chance. There's people out there that are willing to, to work for me. Then all my customers all love me. All of them, my my business has a five star rating. All my customers gave gave me five stars with their compliments. And I get a sense of fulfillment out of that, for lack of better uh, better terms. I mean, obviously, yeah, it, it is also my income source, but I guess you can say I'm not doing it just for the money. I mean, the money is good. I need the money. I mean, I need the income. And quite frankly, working for myself pays better than working for somebody else. But... There's also a sense of satisfaction doing stuff for other people and seeing their gratitude for it. So Regardless, even if my business was failing, which it isn't, even if my business was the issue, which it isn't, I wouldn't shut it down. If it was the issue, and I knew without a shadow of a doubt it is, it is the issue, at best, I'd only drop it down to part-time, and then pick up a full-time job, or keep it full-time-ish, and work it around a full-time job. And so between the business with half the hours I'm currently working, so I'm, I'm working fucking like 17 hours a day, I'm day, seven days a week. So with the business cut down to half the hours I'm working now, and then those hours replaced with the full-time job, I'd probably still be making roughly the same amount of money between the two of them. But I'd have... You know, some of that money being from the job, being direct deposit, and then my business, you know, the money comes in pretty much daily. But the business isn't the problem. The problem is I was in a deep depression for a long ass time. And I did something I shouldn't have done in the complete wrong state of mind. That's what the problem was, is. And now, you know, really the only solution to my problem is to go full throttle with the business can get my advertising back up to the level that I that I had before I lost Joanne. 
<laughs> bring in, you know, more customers. Try to, you know, make them usuals, new usuals. Granted, you know, I live in a, in a touristy area, semi-touristy area. So there's a lot of customers that are, that are snowbirds, so they're only here, you know, in the colder months. And then around spring, they go back up north. And then there's, you know, other people that I, could, I consider a usual, but they only use my services when their vehicle is down. Otherwise, they do it themselves, which, you know, makes sense. Um... So I, I really just gotta get my mar my marketing back up to where it used to be. I gotta get the waves of customers coming in the way I, it used to be, and get my income back to where it should be. The problem is, that just my situation is, I don't know that it will happen fast enough to, to avoid an even larger problem because of how badly I screwed myself by doing the damn loan shit back before I was in the proper state of mind to properly think it out and enact that plan you know in the right way where it would have worked out instead I did it Still mentally fucked, didn't think it out properly, and it went completely fucking sideways on me. Which only adds my problem and kind of created the issue that I'm in right now. So, yeah, that's my situation. If you want to hear, you know, point blank exactly what the situation is um subscribe and listen to this to the subscriber only episode and you will hear exactly what the situation is and a little bit more detail of how I am hoping to, to get myself out of it. Um, I would say here in this episode what I'm doing to get myself out of it, but to do that would really give away what the situation is because if I try saying it vaguely, I'm not sure it makes sense. So I, I gotta be able to just say what it is. So, for that, subscribe, listen to the subscriber only episode. Um, and the moral of this episode, with the general background of, of my situation, if you're in a financial mess, regardless how it happened, whether there was a loss of a loved one, Whether it was an accident, whatever. Do not fucking try to find a solution while you're stressed, anxiety filled, and going through a panic attack. Because whatever the hell you plan out in the middle of in the middle of that, it will go sideways. I promise you. So calm yourself down first. Let your mind slow down slow enough to where you can actually think clearly. And then plan a solution to the problem. With the various ways that can be done to get out of a financial hellhole. There's multiple ways, not just the way that I tried to do it. And go over each and every one. The pros and the cons. If you do this and then that happens, how are you going to fix it before it snowballs? 
Like, you literally got to think this shit out. Otherwise, I'm telling you, your financial situation will can get worse. Can the plan will go sideways. Can do not be as stupid as I was and plan out a possible solution in the middle of a fucking panic attack. And, and then, without a second thought, doing it. Because it will go sideways. It will create other problems and make shit worse. Before you think of a plan to fix it, make sure you're calmer. The panic attack has subsided. Your mind is, is slow enough you can actually think. And at that point, come up with a plan of how you're going to solve your problem. And then, and only then, will whatever your plan is have a chance of actually working out. Because from experience, doing it during a panic attack, it will most definitely go sideways. And when you're in a financial disaster, the last thing you need is for shit to go sideways and for for the problem to get even worse. And that is the last thing you need, especially when finances are involved. And on that note, I'm going to end this episode. If you want to hear the exact issue, exactly what I'm facing, and what I'm planning on to hopefully get out of it, um, subscribe and listen to the, and listen to the subscriber only episode. Um, granted, because of how big the problem is now, it's going to take me a few months to get fully out of it. But as long as I enact the plan and I stick to it, everything will be fine. It's just a matter of will it be fine long enough for everything to fall in place and everything is staying well maintained so I can maintain, you know, my regular bills and shit and at the same time you know, get myself out of this mess that I'm in. That, that's, that's the big question here. I will, uh, see you in the next episode. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe for subscriber-only content. You can find links to subscribe at show.redconrad.com. Subscriptions are available directly through Spotify, as well as through your, a memberful account, where you, you can access subscriber-only content on any podcast listening platform. Whatever platform you prefer to listen to podcasts on, you will be able to listen to my subscriber-only content on that platform via a, a feed specifically for you through your memberful account. Again, the links to the subscriptions can be found at show.redconrad.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Red Conrad Show. Don't forget to subscribe, and remember, if you're not listening on Spotify, Spotify is the home of my subscription-only content. So any stories you want to hear that have part one or you know, they're missing pieces on the, on the free side, you got to hop over to Spotify and subscribe to the, subscrip- to the subscription content to get the uh, missing pieces of those particular stories. I will see you in the next episode.